G'day guys and welcome to today's um, video on are Kelpies any good at guardian dogs with specifically chooks? As you know we're a chook family, my name's Grant, this is my daughter Sophia. Sure is, she's got that name down pat now and we love our backyard permaculture lifestyle. We've got chooks, we've got ducks, we've got quails, we've got everything under the sun, even a beehive kicking around at the back. But one thing that we don't want and that's predators. And we live in a place, obviously Australia, that's really close to the bush, uh, bushland, and we have foxes visit day and night. So we, we had a bit of a challenge. We wanted to get a livestock stock guardian dog. Now, Maremmas and um, the big, uh, what are they, Anatolian Shepherds, they are magnificent dogs. And actually, they are better than, than this dog as a livestock guardian. In fact, we shouldn't even use the term livestock guardian to describe what this guy, Rooster, does. So, tell us about how this guy differs from a livestock guardian that lives outside 24-7 with the chooks. Tell right. about the, the day in the life of this guy. Alright, so he will go outside during the day, but when at night time he'll come inside and sleep inside. Um, and stop there, I might add to that. So, we were looking for a, a family pet that predominantly is a family pet, uh, but then give us some security during the day. We've got neighbours left and right, all with chooks, and the foxes are so active, they started losing them during the day. At night, we lock our chooks up. We've got a beautiful uh, electric poultry netting that we have just got gassed up with electricity so much that if a, if a fox like, latches onto it, it'll get such a shock, it'll probably uh, go bald from, from fright. Um, but during the day, the foxes were coming. And we, we, we got our first chickens, and then it was only a matter of time before they were lurking, lurking down. In fact, occasionally we drive down the street, at, at, I'm talking like two o'clock in the afternoon, and there'll be this big fat fox strutting down the road with a head in its mouth. We knew you had to do something, we had to do something quick. And if you know from our YouTube channel, how do we hate people keeping chickens? What do we hate about? Um, we, um, having them in a coop. Um, yeah, we, we, we really against confinement with birds. In fact, any animal. If you're uh, taking off an animal, if it's sacrificing its time and its energy to produce eggs, milk, meat, whatever, you have a duty to provide the best life possible. So we had a bit of a conundrum. We wanted a pet also that we could um, get up at five in the morning, every day and do a 6K walk, no worries, uh, but then go into the backyard and work. So what's his name? Let, let's, let's do a little bit of a profile on this uh, furry friend. He's all in a bit of a cuddly mode because he's uh, wondering why he's inside during the day. And he doesn't really want to be here. So tell me about this guy. Right, so this is Rooster. He is three years old. Yeah. Um, um, he is purebred, pure, purebred red kelpie. Um, he's bred for um, livestock management, livestock moving. And before we go on, we should talk about instincts. This dog is an instinctual herder. And we do not want to knock these instincts out of it because this is our greatest asset. It's actually not designed as a stock watchdog. Yes, it was bonded very easy, and we'll talk about how to bond your dog, uh, how to create a connection, how to stop it actually eating your chooks. But at the end of the day, uh, he is a chook that's designed for moving sheep. Uh, and as you know, our YouTube channel, Future Farmers, we didn't want to ruin that, those beautiful instincts because there will be a time when we move, we need them. Um, but we also wanted a bit of a uh, protecting dog. We live in an area that has it's had quite a bit of crime lately. My mother's been broken into uh, five times in the last four years. One of my best mates, she had a home invasion about about two years ago. They took a car, it's pretty scary stuff. And uh, we wanted something that could sleep inside, predominantly in my daughter's room during the night, protect her, and during the day, Shanghai I'm outside, and look after the chooks. This guy fits the bill perfectly for that. Um, let's, uh, let's have a little look at Let's go back in time. Let's look at him when he was a puppy and we'll talk about some of the training techniques we, we used and then we'll click into how he behaves around the chooks now. Sit, getting on the training early is important. Obviously uh, learning to sit on command, toilet training you should be able to do within the first 48 to 72 hours, uh, following on a leash, uh, all dead easy stuff. Uh, you just gotta put the time, effort and positive reinforcement. Yeah, and in life you don't trust someone unless they trust you. So you've got to get them off the leash in public as quickly as possible. Uh, and the best place to do this is obviously shallow water because uh, it limits their mobility. And there's that little bit of that fear factor that they want to be around you. This is something you must do early because if you can't trust your dog in public off the leash, God knows you can't trust them around the chooks. 
So yeah, get him off the leash, get him in proximity. He's really cool. And also the calm times at night, reading to him uh, with a daughter, that's a really important thing. Uh, settle down time, relax time. As long as you can get your dog to be connected, relaxed, when, and not always engaged, you're ready for the chooks. The first interaction should always be after walk or after strenuous activity, when your dog is calm and as cool headed as possible. Uh, First of all, you have them in close proximity. As you can see, this is after like a massive walk and a swim. All of a sudden, he woke up to find a chicken in his own bed. Uh, and then upon awaking, um, as you can see, he's a small little tucker. We held his head really gently and continually patted him. So he'd focus on us, not the chickens. Because the idea is he wants to be around the chooks, but not focusing, focusing on them. It's okay, boy. It's okay. Rooster. Shh. Rooster. Boom. This activity is continued daily for about an hour and a half a day, probably for about a month and a half until he's able to sit, relax, and not even be shocked by the chicken. Dealing with curiosity. Curiosity is the most dangerous trait within a Kelpie. This is because it has a relatively low prey drive, but when it becomes interested in things, it almost gets a borderline fascination. The number one thing is to make sure this fascination does not happen with the chooks. Uh, a lot of people for instance, when they're introducing the chicken to the chooks, they uh, they have a three metre rope hanging behind the, the dog and the minute the dog lunges or starts running, they put their foot on, foot on the rope. That's a really cool, um, cool way to do it. Another way that I like to do it is really watching the dog's body language. Um, you'll see another minute, a clip where we were introducing him to some pullets. And I want you to have a look at his eyes and his body language. This is an example of over stimulation and this is when the trouble happens. The dog will never deliberately try to kill an animal um, but if left to its own devices, uh, it will go a little bit troppo and can cause damage. So dealing with curiosity is probably one of the most uh, delicate and important things when it comes to training your Kelpie to get it ready. If like us, you have lots of other species like ducks and quails, get uh, your dog accustomed to that as well. And make sure you teach it left and right. It really helps with navigating. Right side, Rudy. Good boy. And, and stop, sit. After a month or so, you'll find your dog sitting on the couch, looking out the window, just edging to get out there to look after the chooks. For the first month, make sure there's like a physical barrier. It doesn't have to be that solid, separating a dog from the chooks. And remember, it is very tiring work. So keep that in mind. You constantly check on your dog in case it's asleep. Now, goofing around is probably one of the most controversial but very important elements of training your dog to be a chook dog. You have to let it be silly, carry on like a pork chop, and uh, just play the fool. They're great dogs, but they love to have a joke, pull pranks, or do silly stuff. You've got to train your dog that it's okay to A, play around stuff around on, on the walk, or B, play around and stuff around while you are in the house. What did you do, Rudy? What's this? What's this? Do you want to go for a walk, not not drive somewhere? You would know that uh, the five kilometer lockdown's are breaking. Pick it up, Root. Pick it up. Pick it up. He's like, I've got a bit of situation. You're a bit of a monster, Rudy. Just sit. Give him a little sling. Ruth, you hungry? Ice cream? Look at the camera and say thank you. Thank you. Uh, this brings us to our next uh, segment called Risk Versus Reward. Now, Ruth, uh, as you can see, is pretty puffed out because we've got another 36 degree day uh, that we've got him uh, outside working in. Bruce has put his life on the line heaps of times. He's been uh, locked horns, metaphorically, with uh, some foxes before. Um, got a nice uh, scratch on his nose once, a little bit of a scar there. And the worst time was when, just get his back legs, he hooked into a, a fox. You can't really see it, but he had all these uh, 
big scar there because a the fox uh, got in the backyard. Rooster said, none of that, mister, and chomped him. And we ran out to a bit of noise. And he barred the fox against the back, the back fence and it was on for young and old. And then the fox finally uh, scooted out there. So Rooster's is putting a lot of risk, a lot of risk protecting our chooks and keeping them safe during the day. So he deserves a reward. And as now, why is it important to reward a dog for good work? Um, so you can do it again. So he knows that it's the right thing to do and it's not wrong. So is reward just giving him stacks of treats or is that a bit different for the old Kelpie? Um, a Kelpie, it's either a walk in the morning or maybe on Saturdays or we go to the beach. I walk every day, me, Sophia and Old. We get up at 5.15 to our 6K before uh, before work. We leave the, the, the coop shut and then that gets open a little bit later as soon as we get home. But let's uh, let's talk about, so they're not motivated by food at all. So you mentioned beach. How often do we take this fellow to the beach? Um, every week on Saturdays and sometimes Sundays. Yeah, so, and what kind of stuff do you do at the beach with him? Um, we, can, we swim with him, we take him on a walk on the beach. Um, I think that's, oh, I'll throw the ball, yep. So a lot of a lot of sports. The Kelpies love the agility. They love the running. They love the jumping. They love the hard work. Uh, and once they uh, settle down, like this little fellow down here, they uh, chill out for the afternoon. But and that's one thing that's really weird about the Kelpie is when they're on on guard duty, they will sit and plop in one spot and just keep an eye on the chooks. Uh, and then if the chooks move, they'll move with them. They only start rounding them up and, and droving them uh, the minute you go outside. So we find the minimum interaction with rooster when is with the chooks. Um, he's going for a sniff somewhere. But yeah, so during the day we, we don't mess with him. We let him do his thing. Uh, and then when we want to play, we bring him inside. Uh, and just like all, all kelpies, they're getting their feet of grass because uh, he thinks he's a cow. It was a good one. It wasn't fake. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lot going on. We finish every reward time with a really steady routine. Uh, play, relax, run, and then go home and bath. Uh, the more routine you have, obviously, with your dog, the better it is around the chooks because it understands the world more. Just like you should maintain hygiene with your animals, you should also maintain training. This helps the dog stay predictable, uh, sharp, and in full control. Yeah, a really important part of training is long distance recall. Uh, we do this uh, about every second day. Uh, we do a, my wife or, or Sof and I will we'll get about a kilometre apart, uh, probably more like 800 metres, and uh, then we'll, we'll call him. A good, bit, little bit of a life hack when we're training the Kelpie is, dogs, uh, especially Kelpies, they, they love to work for a reason. Uh, so instead of just calling a dog straight to come, make it come and jump on something. Because the Kelpie, they're a little bit stubborn, uh, they want to work, not motivated by food at all, but what they want to do is they want to do a job. So instead of merely just calling your dog, I guarantee you have greater success, not only you call him, get him to do a job. Let's see uh, if we can do this uh, action in motion. You're a good boy. I like to keep him working, so as soon as he gets to Soph, we'll make him turn around and Shanghai back. Come on. Up you come. Ready? Up you come. Up you come. Nicely done. As I said, getting him to come up to something rather than just come to your feet, I reckon it would uh, improve recall, you know, almost 100%.
because as you can see, it's still able to be leashed, but because it had to jump up on something, you've got that bit more control because he feels like he's done something worthwhile. As soon as you get home, the first thing you want to do is go straight back to the girls. Now, usually you'd settle down and just relax with him, but because I'm following, we'll probably try to round him up and bring him to me. For a bit of a laugh, I'm going to stop there, walk backwards a couple of steps, and see if you can bring the whole brood of chooks uh, into the garage with me. Yeah, surprise, surprise, uh, look what we got here. I uh, didn't get the whole crew, we got about a third of them, but he's uh, brought them to the shed for my convenience. Except for these three judges who sat back and evaluated his work. Great job, Rooster. Keep it up. Thanks guys for listening to our uh, Is Kelpie a Guardian Dog? Um, we like to say, you betcha, because really, up, ready, up. And yeah, so the Kelpie is a great dog. I wouldn't say necessarily it's a Guardian Dog. If you want a proper Guardian Dog, if you've got a rural property and it's doing 24 hours a day, which breed should you focus um, on? You could do Marama or the... Ma yeah, you nearly got Anatolian Shepherd. She's close, she's close. Uh, and yeah, so they're the real guardian dogs because they have the guardian instincts. Whereas a daytime protector that keeps your chooks out of trouble and it gives you that peace of mind knowing you won't lose any during the day, a Kelpie is definitely for you. You get the benefit of a beautiful house pet that's easy trainable, nice and sharp. Uh, as you can imagine, it chases away all kinds of birds, meaning you lose less uh, food to wild birds, but more importantly, you get less mites and parasites because your, your chooks will never mix with wild birds. So it's a perfect companion for your backyard, the Kelpie. A ripper dog, um, as I said, uh, puppy is the most uh, important years. Watch out for the curiosity stage. Um, do that slow integration, the long rope that you put your foot on to stop it if they lunge helps. Uh, but also, as mentioned before, you don't get trust unless you give trust. So give him some trust, put him outside and hope for the best because if you show him you're in control and you trust him, I almost guarantee everything will be all right. Uh, so what's your experience of uh, Rusa, our dog, as a guardian dog? I would say you would get him as a puppy. It's easier to train than a full grown dog. Um, it's probably easier to start fresh. A hundred percent. And I actually say it would probably almost be impossible to get a, a Kelpie to live uh, 12 hours a day with the chooks if you weren't from birth. Uh, follow the steps in the video, connection coupled with calmness, coupled with control, uh, and you, you can't go wrong. If you liked our video and like to see more, give it the big Aussie thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, more subscriptions, more likes, more videos. So, for us, you got any ideas for videos you want to make next? Well, we can do protection, um, the electric fence and the set. I had to set up an electric fence in the backyard and uh, retrofit it to uh, your own space. That's a good idea. So, I was thinking we could more talk about how to build bees into the average backyard, but either or, I like your work. If you like where this kid's going, she knows the stuff, hit the big thumbs up. Hope to see you soon. Thanks, guys.